Hey everyone, just wanted to give you an update. Uh, of course, we are here in Southport, North Carolina, and we are going to be having a house built for us. In fact, just today, the footings were dug. I'm having a house built by a standard local builder that builds production homes, but does so with a great attention to quality. But he's not a high performance builder. He doesn't uh, market himself as that. But I wanted a house that at least had a few high performance upgrades uh, done to it so that I could feel a bit better about having a house built. I didn't want to just have a house built to the minimum code standard. I wanted something just a little bit better. I'm also going to be handling the mechanical installation of the HVAC systems, including the heat load calculation. And I hope you enjoy the ride. Here's a picture of the same house that was built previously in a different neighborhood. As you can see, there's nothing special here. It's just a little over 1,600 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. My goal was to build a house that would perform a little bit better than simply a house built to code. Well, the first thing that I did was model the house on Rysoft, which is my HVAC design program of choice. Now this house is built to code, so in the ceiling, one of the main differences is that the house built to code is going to have R38 blown insulation in the ceiling, and it's going to be a typically leaky house. A house built to code would be 5 ACH. The total load that this house usually has is around 2.8 tons. Interestingly, the HVAC contractor that normally does the installs on these houses puts in a 3.5 ton unit. Well, the next thing that I did was model the house after what was important to me. And one of the most important things to me is making sure that I have an airtight envelope. So that meant that I would have to probably encapsulate the attic, which carries another benefit to the load because now my ducts are in a conditioned, or as some people call it, a semi-conditioned space because the attic is now part of the, the envelope. Because the envelope was tightened up, I was going to need to bring in some fresh air ventilation, and that actually adds to the load a little bit. So after changing my load calculation to a spray foam attic, my ducts now in a conditioned space, adding ventilation and tightening up the infiltration, I reduced the load down to 2.5 tons. Now that's not a huge change from what the house was built to code, but at least that load is reflecting things that I care about. I'm not bringing in a bunch of unfiltered, unconditioned moisture through infiltration, and I'm not wasting energy by allowing my ducts to be in a hot attic. Then I decided, you know what, for kicks and giggles, let me try to model this house going all out. So instead of 2x4 R15 walls, I decided to go with 2x6 R19 and R3 continuous exterior insulation. It replaced all my windows with crazy expensive, almost passive house level windows and see what that did to my load. And in the end, it only brought my load down to two tons. So I would be spending all this money to save half a ton of load. The pragmatic side of me could not see the logic in doing that. And the budget that we were working with definitely would not allow that. But it was a nice exercise just to see what the most important thing should be when you build a house. So why did doing things like changing the windows to a very super efficient model not really change the load that much? The answer is because the builder grade windows that already were going in the house were pretty good. Their rating was about 0.32 and 0.28 U-value and solar heat factor. The other answer is in the orientation of the house. There just aren't that many windows that are getting south or west facing sun. Most of the windows are either north facing or they're covered by a large porch or they're east facing. So yes, they get sun in the morning, but that's not during the heat of the day. So in the end, I went with the two things that would give me the biggest rate of return. Not so much in energy savings, but also in health. And that was tightening up the building envelope. So I decided to upgrade to a Huber Woods zip system sheathing, which has a built-in or integrated weather-resistant barrier and a tape system that tapes all the joints. And we're going to spray foam the attic. Not only is that going to make the house more airtight, but it's also going to get my ducts out of the hot attic and into the envelope. These are both great products and methods, but they're only great if they're applied and installed correctly. And that's what we're going to have to keep a close eye on. But for now, thank you for watching. Leave any comments or questions below. 
We'll see you next time.